Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Fresh Perspective. I am Donna Saul. I'm with Eagle Skyfire and with Brie Ezro. And we're welcoming Karen Wittes to our conversation. She is the epitome of how one woman, one person can make a difference. Mm-hmm. She's also the voice behind Karen's bill, Karen's law, SB 1023. And I always say that really carefully because for whatever reason, that one, 1023 throws me at times. But it seeks to extend the uh, parole application from one to three years for sexual violent predators. She's worked long and hard and has finally, finally, finally succeeded in getting this to the floor uh, for a vote tomorrow at 930 and she needs our help. So she's going to tell us a little bit about the bill, how she came about it and what happens next. Hey, Karen, welcome. Hi, Donna. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm thrilled. Are you kidding? I'm so proud of you, girl. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, You know, I know it was you and a lot of other people. I know that. And I know you're going to say that, so I'll just say it for you. But um, talk about one person making a difference. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Um, So do you want me to just kind of give a little? Yeah. All right. Start with tell the listeners a little bit about what happened to you to the extent that you're comfortable and then how you came about the law um, and or the bill. And then we'll go from there. Um, Well, I'm a survivor of a very vicious and violent crime. Um, When I was a teenager, I was stalked for many, many years uh, by my stalker and um, until he ultimately followed through with his plan to try to take my life. He strangled me twice until I was unconscious. This happened when I was 16 years old. So he strangled me twice until I was unconscious. Um, He raped me. He beat me unconscious. And then he stabbed me multiple times in the chest with a 14-inch serrated butcher knife. He then wrapped me in sheets, and he shoved me underneath of the bed and left me there to die in a pool of my own blood. Since I survived, and I'm literally a miracle of modern medicine, since I survived, um, he obviously couldn't be charged with murder. So he was sentenced to 15 to 40 years. What most people don't realize is that after serving their minimum sentence, Pennsylvania inmates can reapply for parole on their own every single year, regardless of what the parole board orders. So in my case, my attacker was up for parole. He was deemed to be such a high risk and a danger to society, as well as myself, that the parole board actually ordered him to serve his maximum sentence with no no chance of being able to apply for parole again. They didn't want to review him ever again. They said, you're too much of a threat. You're staying in prison. (laughs) So um, I was relieved. I thought that that was it. However, it doesn't matter. Inmates in Pennsylvania are able to request a parole hearing every single year, regardless of what the parole board orders, which is crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so um, it's almost like the the parole board doesn't have the authority over the inmate. Right, right. It's almost like a joke. I mean, why even go through the process if they don't matter? Exactly. And they, they, they see my attacker as such a threat to society that they didn't ever want to review him ever again. But yet he can still come up for parole. And when he requests this parole hearing, they have to give it to him by law. Yeah. So if they have no intention on releasing him, it's wasting taxpayer dollars by allowing these violent offenders to come up every single year when they have no chance anyway. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the emotional impact on the victims year after year after year. Incredible. It is torture. It's re-victimizing us all over again. And it's thousands. It's not just me. It's thousands of survivors of these egregious crimes that have to go through this year after year after year at the mercy of our attackers. Yeah. It's not even what the parole board or the judge or anybody orders. It's what the, the attackers, the inmates, are saying. Yeah. And then we have to go and, and do you know, go out and give our testimony because our attackers say so. Yeah, and, and you know, I think what people don't realize too is that it's not just you showing up on the date of the parole hearing, it's the months before and the anxiety of the date and preparing again to relive what happened to you and then testifying and hoping to God these people who really don't matter in many ways but are going through the motions right. agree that this man will stay in jail. Absolutely. It is pure torture and it's yeah. months of it. And, and then they, the recovery too, you know? So. Yes, absolutely. So it's like the victims, they, they suffer from the PTSD. We, I shouldn't say they, we yeah. suffer from PTSD. We suffer from 
everything that we've been put through, and then to have this put back on us again every single year, and then you have to wait months. So it's not even every single year. It's it's a few months out of the year that we have time to just kind of relax. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, alleviate a lot of the trauma and the re-victimization that we have to face now on a yearly basis um, with Karen's Law, SB 1023. And what that does is it extends the parole application waiting period from every single year to every three years. So you get a little piece in between. Exactly. So we can, you know, breathe and take a second to just kind of, you know, regroup before we have to go back. It's a very modest proposal. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're trying to take away the rights of these sexually violent predators. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to give ourselves some time to regroup before we have to go back again. Yeah, and he pleaded guilty, so yeah. it's not like, you know, in some it's unfortunate that he lived because I know there was an almost an option that he didn't and yeah. um it's unfortunate that he lived because and that's what I think people don't understand and that's why I've been so passionate about this on your behalf only because well, not only because but because people don't realize what's really going on here and you know, that's why I'm so happy that you sh- you show up every time and you tell your story and I know this is difficult for you too so i'm very very grateful but people need to hear it because they need to understand the real impact of these types of sexual predators on people who were just living their lives until their lives had got shoved off the rails by people like him exactly so karen first of all this is skyfire and thank you for being here and again i really do salute your courage and thank you for telling your story because hopefully it comforts you in some way that you're telling it in a way that actually creates something meaningful something positive so that would be my first thing i want to say thank you for doing this for all of us so that's number one oh thank you so much yeah and then the other question i have is you know i guess for me hearing that someone like this really obviously has profound psychological issues Mm -hmm. why do they even consider it why are they not putting them through a psychological workup before even going through the parole process because i would think that would end it right there yeah i i i I have no idea anytime that we ask any questions we're Mm -hmm. always told that they have their rights the criminals and the criminal justice system Mm -hmm. they have their rights yeah well it's not denying them the right it's just making sure that they uh understand not not only what they're asking for but are they ready to receive what they're asking for right i'm not denying them anything really right exactly but the moment that these people plead guilty Mm -hmm. all of the rights shift to the to the prisoner Right. It's and that's what Karen found out the hard way. She yeah. had no voice once he said guilt. Once he pleaded, mm-hmm. she had no voice anymore. She became an almost like ancillary to the system, and the whole system worked almost in his favor, not in hers. So she became second to the process itself, and the process itself is broken. And that's what she's been working so hard. So, Karen, you finally did it. Oh my God! It's, gonna, <laughs> it's the vote is oh tomorrow. My God, step close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at, at this point, um, are most of the senators on board? Are there enough votes? I know we're going to talk about, you know, what we need people to do next, and that's call the rest of the senators on yeah. this committee and lobby them to vote for Karen's Law, SB 1023. Mm-hmm. Well, we have we have 17 senators that are on board currently right now mm-hmm. um, that are co-sponsors. Um, so right now, tomorrow, like you'd mentioned at the top of the show, or I'm sorry, at the top of the interview, um, We're asking all Pennsylvania residents to please contact the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee um, and ask them to vote yes on Senate Bill 1023 tomorrow. The vote is going in at 11.30 a.m., so you have exactly one day. Oh, it's 11.30, okay, yeah. (laughs) How many more senators would you need for this to pass? Um, Well, just for right now, we need it in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Mm -hmm. So it's all of the, the members in the Senate Judiciary. Mm-hmm. And if you go to her Facebook page, Karen's Law SB 1023, you can find a post about this. And attached to that post is a screenshot of the names, addresses, and phone numbers. And this takes literally 30 seconds. My original plan was to call every day and use, it, <laughs> use a fake name, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, there are limits. And apparently, there's a system for this. No, go figure. Um, but it literally takes 30 seconds. Yeah. They pick up the phone. They take your information they say thank you for calling and that's all it takes i mean it takes you 30 not even 30 seconds to dial the number 
Um, and so really everybody needs to just check out that Facebook page. Please follow that Facebook page. Please look at the list of the senators, make the phone call for them. I uh, make the phone call to them so that this law, this becomes law. I'm so and excited for you. Ask them to vote yes on SB yes. 1023, also known as Karen's law. And there's another thing too that, um, you know, I know this is a little bit of a stretch, but this is open to the public, this vote tomorrow. So anyone uh -huh. can attend. And if you, if you want to attend and show your support for Karen's Law, it will um, be held in room 8EB at the Pennsylvania Capitol at 11.30 a.m. So if you want to physically show up and show these senators of the Senate Judiciary Committee that you mean business and you want to see this pass, you're more than welcome to attend. Wow. Are you? I guess you're going, right? Yeah. So we will be there. Oh, my yeah. goodness. This is, like, so <laughs> emotional. <laughs> this is so emotional. There would be, like, a shuttle bus or I, something. I know, right? I'd jump on the shuttle bus. How are you feeling about it, Karen? Nervous. Yeah, yeah. I think you should be proud. This is the first big step, so we're really hoping. Yeah, well, like Skyfire said, you should be very proud. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I mean, that. you have done an amazing, amazing job. Thank you. It's really so inspiring because, you know, you talk about the power of one and one person making a difference, right? And now mm -hmm. you're talking to her. You know, yes. a real live example of one person can make a difference. And the courageous tenacity to make I it know, happen. I know, right? And, and this is no easy cakewalk for her. No, no but like, talking about you like you're not still with us, Karen. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's fine. This is but like, like, like you just said, I mean, if it was something about, uh, you know, legislation to fix a pothole or something like that, it wouldn't have the um, emotional connection that it has with me with this because it's just constantly bringing it up bringing it up for me as well and i know the importance of this so it's it's not something like i'm trying to pass legislation to fix a pothole it's no no so much beyond drama. that or not like black hole. not to mention that potholes are not not, not to be hating on the pothole people no, no, out no, there no, no, <laughs> no, i'm only potholes, kidding there's just emotional trauma oh, yeah. that is linked to this with myself. So let me ask you something. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to, and you know the drill. Just tell me you don't want to answer it. Mm -hmm. um, but how, did, how have you managed to deal with this all these years? Because you and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of other people are doing the same thing. Yeah. How do you do it? Um, I just always try to think the way that I thought the day of my attack. Mm -hmm. And when I was laying on that bedroom floor bleeding to death and dying, I kept saying, he will never have any power over me. I will always win. I will always beat him. I might not win at everything in life, but I will always win against him. Well, you certainly are about to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I meant that, and I felt that, and I think that's what gave me the strength to be able to get out from under that bed and walk to my grandparents' house to safety. Yeah. That, that's real. That's incredible. I mean, talk about being meant for something greater, right? That, to be able to have all of those wounds and have all of that trauma. The heart and still, of a champion. The heart of a champion. Exactly. Right. Right. Champion. Exactly. That's what exactly. It means. It's, and, and, you know, to meet her, I mean, I, you haven't met her, but Bree's met her. I mean, to meet her, you could feel it in her, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, she just she's got what it takes. And I'm just so proud to know you, Karen. Thank oh, you so geez. much for joining us. Thank you so much. And thank you for all of your kind words. And it's just more inspiration. And it's just making me, you know, want to do this even more. So thank you so much. Uh, for well, listen, wrap it up one more time. Tell people where they can go. Tell people what to do. Just, you know, we're going to tell them. We're going to tell them. We're going to tell them again. Okay. Okay, so please contact the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee and ask them to vote yes on Karen's Law SB 1023. Uh, the vote is tomorrow at 11.30 a.m., October 2nd, so you have one day to do this. So if you could please call the, Senate, the members of the Senate Judiciary and ask them to vote yes on Senate Bill 1023. You'll be helping thousands and thousands of survivors' lives for the better. Yes, and you can find that list of senators on Karen's Law SB 1023 Facebook page. There's a screenshot of it. It's got the names, the addresses, and the phone numbers of all of these senators. It takes literally 30 seconds. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Good so luck. Much. Well, I'll be I'll be talking to you tomorrow, most definitely. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>